Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Bowhunter Die. Justin, yes, sir. here we go, man. I mean, for me, this is when it really starts to... This is, this Feel starts like hunting up. season's yes. coming? Yes. We're, we're after... Killing mosquitoes. Then you know it's good Oh my gosh, the mosquitoes are absolutely horrendous. We've had so much darn rain here. I don't Did you see the video of all the fish flapping in the roads yesterday bad, after yes. all the flooding? I mean, it was absolutely crazy. But People the mosquitoes are, are terrible, but it is officially food plot season trail cam velvet buck season here we go we are in the home stretch we are i mean we're going to first jump to ohio and we're going to hook up with paul to see what kind of little strategies he's has in place this year to hopefully knock down a big one yeah well, let's check it out now southeastern Ohio um, I am down in my food plot and as you can see uh, the weeds have just taken over so I got the old Alice Chalmers tractor out uh, and I'm gonna mow this food plot here and believe it or not there's pretty good clover and um, uh, there's some other you know alfalfa and stuff down at the base of this but we've got to get rid of these weeds and let that clover and alfalfa to kind of sprout up through and uh, get some sunlight uh, the other two things I want to do is I want to take you to some of my camera setups and uh, show you why they're good spots for awesome pictures and, uh, you know, big bucks. And, uh, and also I want to tell you, you know, how I'm getting in here. You notice I'm driving the tractor down here. I don't really want to be down in this spot very often, but you can get away with a lot if you, uh, you know, use something that the deer are used to. So I'm going to get working here and then... Uh, uh, mow this food plot real quick and then I'll show you a couple of my camera sites and uh, like I said uh, why I get some good pictures and as a matter of fact in the past couple of weeks I got some pretty sweet pictures so I'll talk about those and show you my camera setups here in a little bit but I got to get to work. We've got uh, everything mowed, so um, that's nice. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about, uh, right behind me I've got an apple tree that is loaded with apples this year. And of course that's an easy thing to see that uh, you're going to get a lot of deer pictures around that. As a matter of fact, I've got a camera on uh, real close to this apple tree and the deer you can see have pretty much taken all the apples off of the tree up about to their head height. So I'm going to go grab the camera and uh, we'll see what we got this uh, past couple weeks. All right, well, one thing I noticed uh, when I checked this camera is there's a good many pictures on here. Um, I'm hoping that they're all deer, but of course, I'm pretty sure that they're not. Uh, the way I had this camera mounted, it's on a small apple tree, and it's overlooking, which is a great angle. But right beside it, I've got a fence post, which I really can't mount my camera on this. It's a horizontal fence post. So uh, luckily, I brought one of these HME Easy Mount uh, trail camera holders. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to screw it right on here, and it'll give me a little bit better angle, and also I won't get all those wind pictures. Right, well, here's another one of my favorite uh, sets. It's overlooking a water hole down in the swamp. One uh, tip that I like to do is keep your cameras high, and you can almost point it in any direction. So this camera is pointed towards the west, but since it's overlooking this water hole and it's kind of pointed down just a little bit, and it also that the trees kind of cover it by the time the deer are coming out, um, you know, I end up getting some really good pictures. So um, last year I had some awesome big bucks that uh, you know I was chasing, and I caught them early season over this water hole. So, check it now and see what camera what kind of pictures we got on it when we get home 321 in a little over a week so that could be some good pictures these are always sweet you get fawns good bucks in velvet raccoons uh, what else do we get here uh, some uh, snapping turtles we got uh, ducks 
Uh, there's also a post right here that uh, a lot of birds come and land on. So some really cool pictures and, uh, and uh, come out with really good quality because of the time of day that the deer come out, angle of the camera, and also that the sun's kind of behind the tree so it's not glaring into the camera's lens. All right, well here I am at my last camera set that I want to show you guys. I've got some really cool pictures off of this set already this year, and I can't wait to, wait to check what I have uh, in the past couple weeks. So the coolest thing about this camera set, like I'm saying, is that you get a picture uh, of something cool, uh, and then in the background, you have something awesome too. So uh, the other day, we got a picture of a bobcat walking on this trail, and there's a blue herring across the creek kind of watching him. Uh, you know, we've got some deer in the forefront and then in the background you've got, uh, you know, a buck walking across the, the back of the uh, creek. So that, those are cool things that I look for to, uh, you know, make an awesome uh, trail camera picture. You know, these camera nowadays, the stealth camera that I'm running now, the G30, uh, you know, they take great pictures all the time. But you put a little bit of work and a little bit of time and a little bit of, of knowledge into where you're setting up that trail camera and how you're angling it and where the animal is going to be. Uh, when it's going to take that picture and you'll come out with some a lot cooler footage All right, so in closing uh, the things that uh, you know if you can take anything from it um, Check your trail cameras using a tractor if you can that's the best option uh, next thing uh, try to uh, Envision what your trail cameras are going to take a picture of uh, the distance what's in the backdrop and uh, What what you have that trail camera there for also? Uh, mowing food plots, trying to uh, take care of weed control and stuff. Uh, my beans are um, growing awesome right now. I think they're about five to six inches tall, and hopefully the deer will start uh, hitting those, and we'll be able to maybe film some early season, uh, you know, velvet footage over them. But definitely this fall, we're going to be putting in some heartland plots. Uh, so in the next couple uh, months, we'll be working on those. And until next time, bow hunter die. I think I finally know what my favorite tool is for hanging, you know, trail cameras because Paul's right. I mean, you need to take that extra time to make sure you're going to get the shots you want. Sure. For me, it's the weed whipper, man. Everywhere I go, I carry a weed whipper now. I mean, I got an electric well, weed whipper by Ego. This baby rocks. And I can clear an area. I'm telling you, you laugh all you want. I love my Ego. I like my whipper. machete. I just machete things down. I'm a, I'm a machete <laughs> fan myself. But, Paul, you know, Paul it's had amazing. some great tips about, you know, trail cameras there. And, and he, Paul was really, you know, right. When it comes to trail cameras these days, you know, they're taking such high quality photos and videos that, you know, it does pay to take a little bit of extra sure. time to, you know, set that camera up properly. Mike Fitzgerald showed us some stuff in the past, you know, that he's gotten some really great photos. Paul's got a cool spot there where all the birds are landing. You know, so it's more than just deer. Uh, of course, you know, we want to see those velvet bucks, but, you know, just a, a great little tip from Paul and something to keep in mind when you guys are out there setting your trail cameras, you know, this summertime. Well, with that being said, we're going to now join up with Tyler, and I'll tell you, he's killed a lot of good deer, but he's got a little trick that's going to make sneaking in your stands a lot better. Gonna share a little tip with you, um, die-hard bow hunters like myself, about access to and from tree stands that are relatively easy to get to, but almost too easy to get to. And what I mean by saying that is, I have a stand about 100 yards from here. I can park my truck right here by our grain silo. There's a public road right here to my left, about 80 yards away, and. I've always had food plots right on the other side of this grass. So about three years ago, I was doing some research online of uh, privacy fences and what people use for privacy fences and uh, without building one, obviously. And I came along uh, a website that was selling this grass. It's uh, called Miscanthus gigantus. And this is the third year for it. Um, obviously, it gets bigger as it um, the longer it goes. Uh, the first year it comes in a little root form like this and maybe get a couple to three feet tall, one one or two stalks off of it. Nothing spectacular. I thought, oh man, I wasted a bunch of money because these are about 50 cents a piece and you got to plant them by hand. And um, so 
The second year, I actually fertilized it with uh, pure nitrogen, and uh, it probably tripled or quadrupled in size. It got about, as you can see, 10 feet tall, and it was about this big around. So I did that again this year, and this is for a third year, and uh, it is already about, oh, it's as tall as my hand, so probably eight foot. Step back here. Eight or nine feet tall up there, and it has completely closed every gap uh, in this fence. Um, I planted them three feet apart three years ago, so they have grown at least a foot and a half. Each plant has grown a foot and a half because they're touching and they're all mingled in. Um, the one thing I have noticed is now I can slip right down this roadside, walk right to my tree stand, and never get seen if there's deer out in the food plot because the way I have this stand set up is I walk right down this grassy fence and I hit this little drainage ditch. It's just a drainage ditch off the field. So I'm actually lower than the, the food plot. And my tree stand, the, the climbing sticks, are right on that ditch side. So I can just slip up the ditch, climb up the back side of the tree, get in the stand. It's pretty brushed in. And uh, literally I've done that with deer out in the food plot at 40, 50 yards. And uh, they never even know I'm there if the wind's in the right direction. For two decades, the Optimizer by HHA Sports has been the brand of choice for archers around the world. Our latest innovation, the Optimizer Light Kingpin, features a quiver-friendly, wheel-forward design, built-in second and third axis adjustment, magnified sight tapes, and a highly anticipated dovetail, making the Kingpin the most versatile sight on the market today. In the field or on the range, don't settle for second best. Own an Optimizer and join the crowd. You know, Justin, for 50 cents a piece, I mean, at first I thought it was just, you know, Tyler's the farmer. So I thought, hey, you know, that's just something he dragged in and planted there. But sure. you know what? Actually having to dig in those little balls, that that's impressive. Yeah, no, that, and this stuff's awesome. Yeah. Awesomely huge. I've never personally heard of it. So, you know, really cool tip from Tyler. Seems like a, a relatively easy way to build yourself kind of a screen for, you know, getting into and out of your stands. You know, awesome. this, this episode, a lot of it's about food plots. And that's always one of the hardest things with food plots is getting in and getting out of them uh, and not spooking deer so you know great job Tyler uh, as always I'm sure he's got some big bucks on on camera we some big em. velvet ones down there hopefully we'll be seeing that hit list before too long uh, guys for our last segment in the show you're gonna join myself and Tom Alford uh, out here on our lease uh, getting some food plots in so let's check it they're out they're not now. just getting them ready they're getting them ready for me we're getting them ready for graph we uh, need this to help year on, this year on, they're gonna help me get it well deer. you need to shoot a bigger deer this year everyone <laughs> said you didn't Whoa. shoot a typical Todd buck Dude, yeah, I, this, I had that monster <laughs> underneath my stand, and I just I wasn't gonna let that. So arrow this fly. year, hopefully, our hard work pays off for Todd. So let's check it out now. All right, well, food pot season is officially here. I think it's June third. As usual, we're running behind a little bit, but uh, Justin and I came up with a really good plan this winter when we were out here shed hunting, and this little area here we really like. There's a bunch of different trees to choose from, and we found that the deer are crossing and coming out of this big bedding area that's back here and filtering through here. So we're going to put a nice little clover chicory plot through here with uh, Heartland Rackmaker Plus, and then um, from here we haven't decided, but possibly beans, corn on the other side of it. Anyway. Uh, and then we're gonna go to another spot where we've got a ton of clearing to do. Um, really close to where we put the food pot last year, but we feel like it's mm, 100 yards off. So we're gonna move it, clear it, and spray it. So here we go, food plot season. Let's get to work. Well, first food plot is officially sprayed. Uh, I'll probably come back to this plot in about a week and see exactly what I got and what I didn't get. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, I ran out of chemical at some point out here, so I don't think I killed all of it yet. So again, I'll come back here in a week and uh, we'll get the rest of it sprayed and killed off. But essentially what we've got here is, as Tommy said earlier, we came out during the winter when we were doing some shed hunting. We picked out the tree we wanted to be in. We're only, I don't know, 
60 yards from a stand that we had last year uh, but there was no good spot to put a food plot over there so we decided to move the stand up we picked the tree out and we actually designed this food plot it's kind of an L shape right and it's in the inside of that L is where our stand is going to be which gives us maximum hunt coverage of that food plot the one thing that I don't like about hunting food plots a lot of times is when you make them too big you make these big kind of destination fields and then the deer get out in them and they just sit there and they don't move all night and you never get a shot at them we don't want that to happen here we've got destination food sources completely surrounding this property corn and soybeans the deer have got plenty of food out there we want to give them a essentially a spot to stop and browse maybe on their way to or from those destination spots uh, which is what we're gonna do here as Tommy said we're gonna plant clover and chicory from Heartland Wildlife we may end up putting some beans uh, or potentially some corn in here for a late season spot as well so uh, this spot is done for right now I'm gonna head back to the truck grab a little bit more roundup and then I'm gonna meet Tommy he's got the skid steer he's clearing out our second spot so no time to waste let's go all right well just checked in on Tommy he is using the forks on the skid steer to actually tear up a bunch of the uh, buckthorn and some of the other just nasty shrubs that are out where we want to plant that that food plot so I'm gonna hold off on spraying that plot for right now what I am gonna do is got a stand up here behind me and I don't think you guys can see it yet over my left shoulder this is actually the food plot we had last year it worked out pretty decent you know I shot a doe out of it could have shot a couple other does out of it later in the year but you know we just never really saw the, the buck activity in this food plot that we were really expecting last year ran cameras on it all year uh, if any bucks came through it seemed to be at night uh, they just weren't really using it a lot so uh, we know that the bucks are bedded back over behind this stand we just think it was in the wrong location wrong wind just kind of first year learning the place. So we're gonna yank this stand out of here and we're gonna go move it over onto that food plot that Tommy is making. So I'm gonna throw on my hunter safety system and uh, I'm gonna pull this lone wolf down and gonna move it, so let's do it. All right guys, well, that's gonna wrap up today. Uh, this is day one of 2017 food plot and stand prep. We're a little bit late, but what are you gonna do? We got uh, the first uh, spot we stopped at, we got that one sprayed. We're gonna wait for it to die. We're gonna come back in and we're gonna mow it and till it. Uh, this one out here, Tommy brought the skid steer out with the forks and the yep. bucket and got it cleared out for us. Yeah, for the most part, I mean, it just, Tried to do a number on getting rid of all this buckthorn and nasty invasive stuff. Uh, it just, when it does get into an area, it totally takes over. I feel like over, I'm crawling so. with ticks right now. Although I sprayed myself with permethrin pretty good, all my clothes, look at my arms. But in any case, guys, that's going to be it for today. We got uh, two food plots started anyways. We got one stand hung. We're going to check a couple cameras that have been out here since, uh, I don't know, Last winter year. time. <laughs> Uh, on the way out. Hopefully they're still clicking away and uh, we'll be back here in a couple weeks with another update. So stick with us. Hopefully we got some good velvet bucks to show you shortly. Bow hunter die. All right, well, now that I've got this, uh, Little area all tilled up. I mean, you can see there's a lot of thatch in here. Uh, the soil didn't come up as good as I had hoped for, but that's okay. Uh, these are Roundup Ready beans. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna broadcast all through this area here, and then I'm gonna take that rototiller and I'm gonna run it back over everything and just kinda try to get it under the soil. But uh, all this grass is gonna end up breaking down. The soil will break down when we get some good rains, and then uh, those soybeans will be at all different levels throughout here, but they're all gonna grow. It's gonna take a while, but they're gonna grow, and then um, hopefully with all this thatch and in, in here, uh, it'll keep the moisture content just right. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and spread these beans out and then start tilling. All right, well, as you can see, I got this plot nice and tilled up behind me. Um, soil's looking really good. Um, broke down all the root structure. 
cleaned up all the sticks, picked all the rocks up out of here, tilled it up. It looks awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and plant my seed. I've got the uh, Heartland Wildlife Institute Rack Maker Plus. It's a clover chicory mix. Uh, I've had a ton of luck with it here in Northern Illinois and uh, it, it just works great for these little kill plots. It's just an absolutely awesome setting. So uh, gives them a little snack before they head, to, head their way to the destination fields. But I'm going to get spreading and uh, it is raining a little bit so as soon as I'm done you know it'll wash all that seed down into this nice seed bed that we've got prepared. So here we go. I've given it a couple hours and uh, this field has had a chance to dry out. Uh, the rain kind of slowed down uh, so it's starting to get nice and dry. The seed is still kind of just sitting on the top. So I've got my little makeshift drag. I'm going to pull it behind the four-wheeler and kind of level this whole thing, get the seed down on the ground, hope for rain, and then also what that's going to do is make it a lot easier to come back and mow. So I'm going to hook this little drag up and get going. All right, guys, we're just finishing up our evening. It is uh, June 20th. We're a little late getting the plots in, but you know, it's been raining. We've had meetings and then it's been hot. So in any case, uh, everything is sprayed, rototilled, planted, dragged with our poor man's drag. Uh, we got a stand hung earlier tonight up behind me, calling it the Eagle's Nest in this pine tree. Uh, this particular stand is situated just off of a cornfield that we're hoping is gonna be a good destination food source for this year. Seed is in the ground. Now we just have to pray for rain. Be back here in a couple uh, weeks, hopefully to mow it and uh, check trail cameras and we'll see what we got. So we'll see you next time. All right guys, well today's July 10th. Quick little update. We're standing in our soybean plot that we planted back a couple weeks ago. And it's actually looking really good. Um, a lot of soybeans are coming up. A lot of, a lot of them are actually getting eaten by the deer, but that's what we wanted. Uh, we felt like when we put this in this spot, it was just a great area where a lot of the deer would come down here and want to feed and feel safe. So it's looking really good. Um, Pleasantly surprised to see that it's not flooded because we've had so much rain this year, but I'm happy with the results so far, so we're going to get to the next plot. All right, well, we're here at plot number two. Uh, this is our Rackmaker Plus plot. It's got clover, chicory, and a little bit of alfalfa. And as you can see behind me, it's starting to look awesome. I'm pleasantly surprised to see the growth here. Um, as we sus suspected, we have a few bald spots, so we're going to go ahead and overseed all that now uh, while we still have decent soil conditions and uh, come back in a couple weeks and start mowing it. All right, guys, we are in food plot number three. Last update for today. You know, this plot doesn't look as good as the other two, and we kind of knew that going into it. We sprayed this one late. We didn't give it probably enough time to fully die off uh, before we mowed it and we tilled it under. So we do have a lot of grass coming through in this one. Uh, that'll pretty much be taken care of when we actually get out here and mow this once everything starts getting a little bit taller. This is the same Heartland Wildlife uh, Rack Maker Plus, which is the clover chicory blend that we saw in the last food plot. It is coming up pretty well. Like I said, a few weeds in it, but that'll be taken care of when we mow it. Uh, Tommy went ahead and overseeded it with some additional clover and chicory just to make sure we've got adequate coverage in here. But you know, the whole point of this particular food plot on the far north end of our property is behind me, behind that tree line is a big giant destination cornfield, actually a couple cornfields going pretty far to the north. Last year that was beans. The deer didn't use it a whole lot after after it got cut. This year with it being corn, we're anticipating it being a good destination food source, but around here where we live in the suburbs of Chicago, these deer, especially the bigger bucks, really don't like going out into these open fields where they can be seen from a road during daylight. It's just the way that it is. There's so much pressure. So what we're hoping is that we're going to catch these deer that are bedded to the south, moving through this food plot. They're going to hopefully stage in here before they make their way out to 
uh, the destination field. Of course, that's what we have in our minds. Uh, it doesn't always work out that way, but we had to have some sort of plan in mind. We've already got our stand hung in a pine tree over here, uh, perfect for any sort of west wind at all. Whether it's southwest, west, northwest, doesn't matter. We've got a great wind. That's kind of the prevailing uh, wind for this area. So good stand set up. Uh, everything's ready to go. Now we just need time and uh, hopefully a little bit more rain to get this seed germinated and, and growing. So that's it for today, guys. We're going to uh, make our way around. We're going to check a couple more cameras. Uh, we've got some of the new DS4Ks from Stealth Cam that we're going to be setting out. Hopefully we've got uh, some good pictures and some, some good video to show you of some hitless bucks before long. So guys, we're losing blood. Mosquitoes are horrible. We're going to get out of here for the night. So I guess we'll uh, see you with another update in a couple weeks. Bowhunter die. You know, the best thing about sharing a lease with Tommy and Justin, at least I'm able to see what's going on out there. Because I can tell you, I never got the phone calls of when all these little... You are such a liar. Like, we I, asked no, you no. like three times and yeah. you could never go. When they ask me is this, it's Friday or, or it'll be lunchtime at the Because office. that's hey, how we plan things. What we're guys. Doing, what are you doing this evening? Oh, oh, we're, go oh, oh, oh we're going to the lease. That You're usually not good. doing anything anyways. Yeah, so, you could have came out there and helped us, I but it's all right. But it's okay because now I'm able to see all the footage of what's going on. And I now I know exactly what I need to do. So I am gonna I, I'm gonna grab my quiet can, sneak out there and peek on what you guys are doing out there. That's but fine. Have that. Check our cameras work. for us. There's a lot of mosquitoes. Uh, you know, guys, trail camera wise, we've we've had some some good looking deer on cameras out there. Unfortunately, Tommy and I were kind of morons with some of our camera placements, so the pictures weren't the best. We actually moved all the cameras around put fresh batteries in them. We were kind of trying to ride out those wintertime batteries into the summer. It didn't really work the best. So we put all new batteries, SD cards, moved the cameras, trimmed everything down. We are ready, primed and ready to start getting some good velvet photos. So, so guys, we're gonna be bringing you updates, you know, pretty much every show kind of from here on out on what we are doing out there. Uh, and before we uh, get into the trophy photos, guys, we've got a cool uh, new product announcement from the folks over at Lancaster Archery. So we're gonna uh, turn it over to PJ Riley right now. Hey guys, welcome to the Lancaster Archery Warehouse. We've got a cool new product that we wanted to share with you, tell you about it as bow hunting season's coming up. It's a brand new release from Trueball. It's called the Trueball Execute, and it is a wrist strap index finger release that's got a lot of awesome new features. We're at Lancaster Archery. We love precision archery here, uh, and this is a precision release that bow hunters are going to love. So. One of the first things about this release that's really cool is this is a brass release. It's nickel plated, uh, but it is brass, so it's got that weight uh, that target archers like in a release because you can really feel it. It gives you positive feedback. Um, also, that extra weight eliminates the possibility of torque. When you hit your finger on the end of the trigger here, uh, there's not a chance that this head is going to torque because it's so heavy. Uh, but the, the features of this release are what really makes it cool. So it's a double sear release, which means a lot of trigger finger releases, when you pull back, the sensitivity of the trigger changes as the bow weight increases. So you can set your trigger one way and it feels a certain way at 60 pounds, different way at 70 pounds. It gets a little heavier. With the double sear, that is not the case. You can make this a true hair trigger or you can set it a little heavier if that's what you like. It does have independent uh, adjustment settings for both trigger sensitivity and trigger travel. What's cool about it is it has lock screws. So once you get it where you want it, there's a separate screw that you can lock in your settings just how you like them. Basic operation of the release is you cock the trigger by depressing this right here. And then of course, you just set this trigger. I've got it really light. It just takes a little bit of pressure on there. Single jaw motion, that's also great, which means this is gonna be against your cheek. Uh, when you anchor in, you don't have to worry about the head being affected by your jaw. It's not gonna do it. One head move in there. Uh, they have it, this is the web buckle version. They have another one with a solid connector that bow hunters like that you can really get a grip on. It'll be a single metal post. Uh, and this is the buckle version. They also have a Velcro. So a lot of great features in this release. Trueball Execute just come out uh, this summer from Trueball. We got them at Lancaster Archery. Back to you, Todd and Justin.
Thanks, DJ. It's a great looking new release. Justin, what else do we got here before we end the episode? Trophy photos. Trophy Man, photos. We got trophy photos. So uh, let's stop wasting time. Let's get to it. Devin Zimmerman. Spencer Broussard. Michael Frisbee. Matt Judge. Micah Thurman. Hey, congrats, everybody. Those are some great animals. Todd. Animals? Wait a minute here. Well, they are the animals. The stingray. Is an animal. Is a fish. The last time I checked, but it's still an animal. I think I could actually go bow hunt these guys. There's like three, four arrows in this thing. This, look, this, this looks like my turkeys this year. This is good. I could go with these guys. Todd should definitely do that. <laughs> uh, guys, we have decided that for the rest of this year, we are going to up the ante a little bit on the trophy photos. We get a ton of trophy photos submitted to us. Brandon and Nick usually sift through them and they pick out some of the better ones. What we're going to do is every week when we pick out these trophy photos, Todd and I are going to select what we feel is the best photo, and that person is going to get a free prize from us. And it's going to differ every week. It could cool. be a bowhunting.com like prize. could be something from one of our sponsors. So, guys, make sure you get those photos in. Email them to info at bowhunting.com. Post them on our Facebook wall or go to bowhunting.com. Click on Submit Your Trophy and send them in. You could now win a prize in addition to being on the show. Very I like cool. it. I like it. I mean, Justin, you know, it's the middle of July right now, guys. I think that if there's anything to take from this particular episode, especially watching, I mean, you know, Paul and, of course, you know, Justin, you and Tommy. I mean, guys, if you want to kill deer this fall, it, it requires work. I mean, you, you know, every year I just think about what goes into the, you know, the effort and the time to actually harvest a deer. I mean, yes, yeah, sometimes you get lucky, but a lot of times it's the guys who took the time, did the plots, get, figured out good access to get in and out of their stands, sure. put the trail cameras up, do the work. It's just something to think about. Yeah, I mean, I've always been of the, the, the theory kind of, and you mentioned that, like, you don't have to do that to kill a deer. No. Plenty of people out there killing deer that don't do any of that work. But for me, uh, it makes it a little bit sweeter when it is successful. You know, you feel like you worked a little bit harder to attain that goal. Um, you know, and it has made hunting uh, a little easier, <laughs> which is what we're all trying to do, right? We want to make it a little bit easier on ourselves, gives ourselves a, a better opportunity to harvest a good deer. So guys, get out there, wear your bug spray. The ticks and the mosquitoes are horrendous. Get your trails mowed, get your stands up, make sure you're shooting your bow. And uh, I guess we'll see you back here in two weeks on Bow Hunter Die. For more exciting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and receive live updates from our team members as well as the latest happenings in the bow hunting and archery world. Be sure to share your photos, stories, and experiences as well. And don't forget to pick up your official bowhunting.com and bowhunter die gear by visiting bowhunting.com forward slash gear. We have a full selection of hats, shirts, decals, wristbands, and much more. Great little tip from Paul and something to keep in mind when you guys are out there setting your trail cameras, you know, this summertime. Are you gonna talk now or are we just Dude, you were talking so much, I just figured I better just shut my mouth. Definitely did, and uh, this, uh, bleh. You're definitely liking the, the location here. <laughs>